hello. I can't exactly say welcome to Slow Saturday because this weekend it has become Slow Sunday. I had an extremely bad week. We um, went to see my mother last weekend and I picked up a cold somewhere along the road and on top of that um, one of our grandchildren was sick and um, her mom brought her to me to watch she couldn't take her to the preschool and I picked up a stomach bug from her so I went through this week with no crafting um, kneeling in front of the toilet mostly and then I was fine on Friday and yesterday I went to a social and I came back um, as sick as a dog. So I've got a very fat cold and a bad sinus infection at the moment so I apologize for being late this weekend but when I got home yesterday I was just out. I collapsed on the chair and I was laying there like an old washed out dish rag for the entire day. So that's why I didn't get to see you yesterday. So sorry, we're having a slow Sunday. So what is news in my world? Well, let's talk purple is finished. The pattern is ready to be released. The only issue I have is that my photographer is in Cape Town. And as much creativity as I have with yarn in my hand, that is how little I have with a camera in my hand. My photography skills suck. There's no other word to put it. I never know what to put next to the thing. If it's a person that I'm trying to photograph, it comes out sort of okay, but not really. But if it's just me and my dolly, it's really... But I have no option. I will have to dress up my doll and put her somewhere in the house. I don't know where still and try and style something nice next to her. I really don't know what to do and um, take the photos because the pattern has to go out today. I wore it again yesterday and it's really an exceptionally nice garment. I like the combination of the cotton iron and the kit silk so much that I actually ordered another batch for another um, project and I want to make it long again because this one sits under my butt and it's so nice in this winter cold. It's unbelievable how warm the mohair makes that thing because let's face it cotton is not a warm fiber it actually cools you down in summer but this is a very thick cotton and with the mohair there's a lot of place for air to be trapped so it makes a nice insulation layer the only downside to it is that it pulls slightly here under the arm but yeah, many of the sweaters and the stuff that I've made for myself pulls when I'm wearing them. So I'm quite used to just um, taking a small, very sharp scissor and just snipping off the little balls. And I have a lint remover for others, but I can't use the lint remover on the mohair. That won't work. It will take off the halo of the mohair and I don't want to do that. So I'll just clip off the little balls. But... I'm very, very satisfied with the feel, how it holds its shape, how it sits, and how warm it is. It's absolutely marvelous. So I actually ordered myself yesterday cherry red. I'm in the mood for something cherry red. I don't know what yet, but I'm in the mood for something cherry red. So Let's Talk Purple will come out later today. And... Um, if you are a Patreon subscriber on the Living the Slow Life tier, you will get a coupon code to get the pattern free of charge. Um, another pattern that will come out either today or maybe Tuesday at the latest is the Wild Winds Shawl. It's a shawl that I designed a long time ago that I never published. It was in my second book the Afrikaans book and I'm going to translate it now and put it onto Ravelry somebody asked for it now this shawl let me tell you about wild winds unfortunately I don't have it with me I gave mine away and um, the sample that was made for book two belongs to one of my testers so I don't have one that I can show you but I'll put a photo in for you um, 
this shawl starts with a double chain not just it's a crochet shawl not just a normal chain a double chain and it's very um, it gives you the idea of free form nearly um, it's it, it reminds you of hills in a distance it, it has these hills that climb over each other and it's it's got a totally free form shape um, and once you finish the one piece you actually turn it around and you go back to the original starting chain and you do a mirror image on the other side in different colors um, I I called it a shawl in the beginning but it's actually more of a shawl or a scarf I think but it's it's absolutely beautiful of at least of that I have beautiful photos that the photographer took for the book so that one will come out as well so those are my two patterns that I'm releasing for July it is the let's talk purple knitted um, tunic actually I think we should call it a tunic I don't think it's a sweater it's a tunic and the wild winch wild winds shawl that's crocheted and both of those patterns will be given to the Patreon subscribers free of charge. Now, if you are new to my podcast, um, Patreon is a platform where artists can share their work and people subscribe to that so that they can have a steady monthly income. Now, if you want to subscribe to that, it's $3 a month and you will get patterns for free. Normally, it's a knitted and a crochet pattern each month but I can't commit to that it doesn't always work out like that you know some things just take longer than others but yeah there's two patterns to look forward to if you one of my paid patrons okay um, the design I'm working on now uh, let me pick up this box um, earlier in the week I posted a photo on um, Facebook and Instagram and I asked should I do stripes or should I do oh they're falling out should I do ombre and I must say the results are sort of 50 50 I think although there might be more people that say ombre than stripes but um, I'm gonna do uh, stripes and originally I bought the six shades of color spun um, fingering weight yarn and the darkest one they are rolled into balls because I started something and then I didn't like it and I frogged it the darkest one is this dark rust color and the let's talk purple I fell so in love with the mohair component of it that I actually got um, a matching mohair now I'm going to use this dark mohair right throughout with all the colors but I'm still going to make stripes now you know um, and I'm going to call it Rebel Henley <laughs> when I grew up um, my mom taught me to knit and crochet when I was only four you know that by now but they were very strict rules my mom didn't allow me to use variegated yarn she didn't like it I wasn't allowed to use mohair yarn, she didn't like it. And then the designs as well, she was very strict about what I was allowed to knit. And, and she would um, constantly check my work and if it wasn't up to standard, she would frog it out. And at that stage, as a young child and as a teenager even, oh, it frustrated me immensely. I got so angry at my mom. But today I'm thankful for that because that has made me into the... Um, designer that I am today and I'm always amazed that people when they make a mistake and they say I'm not going back to fix that it's not so bad I'll just carry on it will drive me insane today I'm absolutely pedantic about it and the reason being is I've seen so many people that they chase the finish line all they want is the satisfaction of saying oh I finished this I made this and then they don't wear it because it's not um, really up to standard, even for them. They know there's a glaring mistake, so they don't want to wear it because they don't want somebody to see the mistake. Or 
um, swatching. I spoke about swatching before. They don't want to swatch. It's too much of a hassle just to crochet or knit up that little swatch. So they just jump into the pattern, make the thing, and then it doesn't fit properly at the end, and then they don't wear it. Then they give it away. So for me, I, I, I can't... It's, there's no logic in that for me. I want to make something that I'm really proud of and I want to wear it with with pride and I want to say, yeah, I made this and it must sit well and it must feel well and I, I want to know that it, it's properly made. How the hell did I get to the... Oh, my mom. Okay, so... I'm, I'm happy for that part of it, but many of the design things, the issues that my mom had, I'm still dragging around with me, and I actually don't know why. And one of those, well, let me give you a few. My mom would never allow me to use garter stitch as a feature anywhere in a sweater that I would knit. Um, my mom sees garter stitch as something that... Um, a child would knit that's still learning to knit. A proper knitter won't knit garter stitch. It's beneath her to knit garter stitch. Um, the same with stocking stitch. Stocking stitch will be used in small little portions here and there, but there's no ways that my mom will ever make an entire sweater in stocking stitch. She just won't. Um, our designs had to be intricate. It had to be errand panels or lace panels or... Um, I, I can't even think of one sweater that my mom made that had one stitch pattern right throughout the sweater. It was always very intricate and very elaborate. And I'm sort of fed up with that. <laughs> uh, the other thing, stripes were not allowed. I wasn't allowed to knit stripes because my mom said I was too short. To wear stripes it cuts you in half it makes you look even shorter and even though I'm not a big person she would tell me that it's gonna make you look fat my mom had an issue with weight and uh, she taught me to sew as well and when we would purchase um, fabric to sew I wasn't allowed to choose very bright and multicolored fabric because I would walk, I would look like a walking Christmas tree. So, um, four years now I've been really working with colors that I, don't, I know my mom actually doesn't approve of. Um, I like bright and bold. Um, I'm, we were stuck in that thing of greys and navies and soft browns and mauve, you know, and, and soft maroon. Ugh. Um, I like the bright colours and uh, that is what I work with. And I actually like garter stitch, I really do. Um, if we were to design something like an, an, an open cardigan, there was no ways that my mom would have allowed me to put a garter button band on, on the edges and knit that along with the fronts. It's unheard of. You had to just knit the front and then pick up the stitches and knit the ribbing this way. Otherwise it, it wasn't up to standard. So I want to knit a Henley. A Henley, in case you don't know, it's a sweater with a few buttons here at the top and then it's closed further on. And um, I'm gonna knit this Henley with garter button bands. And I'm going to knit the majority of the Henley in stocking stitch, in stripes, because I want to. To me, it's like, I know this sounds so freaking dramatic, and people will probably think I've lost my marbles, but if, if you know the stories behind the stories, you, it will make sense. I'm just throwing off the shackles of what my mother expected of me, and what society expects of me. I will wear what I want to wear and I will knit what I want to knit and stuff the rest. That is it. So the um, Henley is going to be made with a double strand of fingering weight and mohair 
and it's going to be stripes and the stripes are going to be different sizes as well just because I feel like it it's like a real just, just do this yeah that's what I feel like and um, I had this idea in my head since I started asking the question I was actually just curious to see what the people on Facebook would say would they prefer stripes if it was their choice or would they prefer an ombre well I'm gonna do stripes and when I walked into well yesterday we had the color spun um, studio social in Heidelberg and one of my um, testers attended it and she was working on a cedar forest sweater and she was making it in stripes oh my goodness it was beautiful and it's these these jewel colors you know that that deep teal and the purple and the maroon and the mustard ah i saw it and i thought oh this is like a confirmation i've got to go stripes <laughs> so thanks rihanna for your stripy sweater it has just inspired me to um, keep going with this Henley. i want to start it this week I am behind schedule on my lock cabin patches cal because this week was just I, I couldn't concentrate if I feel so bad then counting for me is um, no let's rather not go there so I didn't crochet at all on my blanket this week I will start on that again tomorrow um, that's coming um, but let's get back to the color spun social before I forget uh, Color Spun has a Christmas in July thing. Um, um, certain of her yarns are going to be marked off through the course of the month. And I'm pretty sure that if you make an arrangement with her, she will um, hold your order until the end of the month so that you can add to the order as you go through the month. It's quite worth looking into it. Yesterday, when we were there, um, her cotton was marked off by 10 rand a ball, which is quite a bit. And um, she has free shipping to the USA at the moment. So that's really worth looking into if you want to use some of the marvelous yarns that I've been using. Um, look at color spun she's got the christmas in july i think the yarn is on special at the moment and she's got free shipping to the usa just before i forget okay um you remember my lantern moon set that i bought um there's good news and there's bad news <laughs> let me show you a pair of needles that i haven't knitted with yet and i'm gonna just turn them around in my fingers so that you can see the writing the one the, on the one side there's lantern moon and then there's um, size as well you know what they look like so that's a pair that I haven't knitted with and this is what the pair looks like that I've knitted with one sweater the writing is off so what bothers me about this is that um, I can't see the size of the needle and the set doesn't include a needle gauge and I know from experience that the knitting needles are not all exactly standard so I don't know how standard lantern moon is I will have to get a local knitting gauge somewhere just to see how they size up in case I mess them up luckily there's not that many needles in the in the set um, so for now I'm just careful to put them back in the right place the good news however is that lantern moon is fully interchangeable with knit pro now you remember that I love the knit pro needles but I hate the knit pro cables but the lantern moon cables fit the knit pro needles which has um, immediately enlarged my options substantially because this set for instance it doesn't include a seven millimeter needle and I want to make another Aaron caress cable blanket eventually I know I want to I don't know when 
it will probably be after, will definitely be after I finish Lock Karen Patches, but um, I'm not even sure if it's going to be this year, but I really want to knit another one for my bed. And uh, I know that time I used a double strand of Moya Erin Caress um, on a 7mm needle, and this set doesn't include the 7mm needle. Now, for me to get the stuff from America every time is a major slip, and it's costly as well. And um, I don't really want to infringe on people to say, oh, you're going to America. Can I have a parcel delivered to you? Can you bring it back? Uh, I don't really like doing that. <clears throat> so now I can um, order a 7 millimeter Knit Pro needle and use that instead. Sorry, that beep beep sound was my um, UPS. The power just went off. We... In South Africa are uh, in serious load shedding at the moment if you don't know what that is they switch the power off for um, certain periods in certain uh, right across the country you you get a schedule to say from that time to that time you won't have power so we don't have power again now for two hours and tonight again for two hours and in the middle of the night again for two hours it's so freaking frustrating that's why I didn't switch the light on when I started the video because I knew I wasn't going to finish it before the lights go off and then it's going to look bad so I'm a little bit in the dark, pardon that. Okay, Knit Pro needles, yes. Um, so the Lantern Moon cables fit the Knit Pro needles. So that makes it a lot easier for me. Not that I can afford any Knit Pro needles at this stage, but anyway, be that as it may. Okay. Alright, so that's all the news from me at the moment. Um, within, I'd say, by the end of July, we would be able to show you um, some of the log cabin patches, the smaller sizes, and then we'll still go on to make the bigger sizes. So you will be able to see the project somewhere during July. That will definitely come. And then you can look out for the um, Let's Talk Purple pattern that will come out today. And the um, Wild Winds Shawlet, I think I'll call it a Shawlet, that will come out. Um, it depends on what you make it with, you know. Maybe we can call it a shawl and just use a little bit bigger yarn. Oh, I'll go check. But that will come out this week as well. And then the Henley will be my next project on the knitting needles. And I will be able to show you a part of that by next Saturday. And hopefully it will be a slow Saturday and not a slow Sunday. And hopefully by then my nose will be open. You must have a splendid Sunday. Have a blessed week and I'll see you next week.